comes true. You could swim along the river, all the way to the sea. You could fly up in the sky above the clouds and trees. Plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. You could swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story time. And welcome to Online Storytime at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy. I'm Teacher Missy. And we are delighted that you're here with us today. Hey, Storytime friends, Teacher Missy, are you ready to start with a song? I love to sing. And I love to get my clappers ready. If you're clapping your hands today, or your elbows, or your knees, or your hand on a table, you clap whatever you want to clap and let's sing together. All right, here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. Oh, that was glorious. There's some great clapping going on. There it is. Hey, do you have any idea what you want to talk about today? Well, I've been thinking about this quite a bit because it's been pretty chilly out there. It has been. It's been very snowy, too. Very snowy and very cold and some wind. So there are some things that we kind of really need to have around when this weather is with us. Mm -hmm. And... I was thinking about hats and mittens and things like that. That's right. But we already did a story time about hats and mittens. Well, today we're going to talk specifically about books written by one of my favorite author and illustrators. I think I know who you're talking about because you know? she writes a book called The Hat. Yes. And, and The Mittens. The Mittens. And if we look at the picture here, we can see a picture of the mitten. Storytime friends, she also writes books called like The Gingerbread Baby and... There was, um, oh, she's written so many books. So, and, so, know, so I... many books. There's books about chickens and there's books about hedgehogs and there's books even one about a parrot. It's pretty incredible. So yes. who are we talking about? So we are talking about Jan Brett. Jan Right. And she's pretty famous for her illustrations. Do you remember that big word? Yes, that's that's the person that draws the pictures. And this is actually a picture with characters from one of her books. And it looks to me like those animals are in a mitten. They are in a mitten. How did they all get in there? That must be a pretty big mitten. I'm pretty sure. Do you have any books to tell us about? I have two today about this and I'm so excited to read them. They're two of my very favorites. Hey Miss Tracy look! I see some animals surrounding a hedgehog. There is a little hedgehog right in the middle of this animals and can you see what he's wearing? I don't think that's a real hat. There's something on his head. Hmm. I suppose anything on your head could be a hat, though. Well, I suppose if it covers you, we'll have to find out. This is called the hat. Do you wear hats when it's cold? Yeah? Good idea. Did you know, Miss Tracy, that most of our body heat comes out the top of our head? So hats are really important. So they help to keep us, that's one of the reasons they help to keep us warm. Not just our skin, but it helps to keep that heat from our whole body where it belongs. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's great. All right, The Hat by Jan Brett. Winter was on the way. Lisa took her woolen clothes out of the closet and she carried them outside. And her winter clothes are made from wool. And we talked about where that comes from. She was hanging them up in the fresh air when a strong wind blew one of her stockings 
off the line. There it goes. You can see that stocking came right off. And teacher, Missy, stocking is another word for what? A sock. A sock, okay. It's, 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 it's the official word, I think. And we have nicknamed them socks. <laughs> Curious Hedgy found it and, and poked his nose in. When he pulled it out, uh-oh, the stocking was stuck on his prickles. Oh, how embarrassing, Hedgy thought. And a lot of the story is told in the outline of her pictures, if anyone has ever noticed that. A lot of what happens is outlined. Well, the mother hen came by with her chicks. Cackle, cackle, she clucked and laughed. What is that on your head, Edgy? Why, it's my new hat, he told her. Isn't it beautiful? The mother hen cocked her head as if she had an idea. Huh. And off she ran. And what's the animal on the bar? Is that a goose that's going to come next? And here's, here is a goose right here. Can I you see? That's the next so animal. something is happening with this goose. Hedgie saw the noisy gander looking down at him. Honk, honk. Ho, 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 the gander laughed. Look at that. The hedgehog has flipped his gizzard. <laughs> Laugh today, Gander, but tomorrow when it rains, my hat will keep me dry. The Gander thought for a moment, and off he ran. Do you know what a Gander is? I think that's a boy goose. It's a boy goose, yes. Now, somebody's next here. I see a cat. Huh. I wonder what the cat's up to. The barn cat was watching from a tree as Hedgie tugged at that stocking. Meow, he called down. What a silly looking hedgehog you are with that, that thing on your head. Well, but my ears will be warm in a snowstorm. Hmm, purred the cat. And off he ran. Uh-oh, somebody's coming behind the cat. It looks like a dog. Mm -hmm. Looks like a dog. The farm dog and her puppies found Hedgie in a patch of brambles. Do you see what that is? The brambles are bushes, like rose bushes with thorns on them. Hedgie, is that a hat you're wearing? How funny you look, she barked and her puppies yelped and giggled. But I'll be cozy and dry when it snows, Hedgie said. The farm dog's ears perked up and off he ran. Oh, somebody's next. What is that? You're right, it's a pig. A pig. Hmm. Blink, blink, the piglet squealed. What are you up to, Hedgie? Mama Pig asked. Well, I'm making sure my hat doesn't fall off and if a nice icy wind should just blow up. Well, I see, said the Mama Pig. And off she ran. Oh. Who's next? A horse. Interesting how these animals keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They are getting bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. Hedgie, what is that ridiculous thing on your head? The pony snorted at Hedgie. Well, that was the last straw. <laughs> it's my hat, of course. Don't you know that everyone should wear a hat in the winter when it is cold and, and snowy? Oh, Hedgie just shouted. The pony looked startled. Hedgie was usually so friendly. Well, off he ran. Now I see a child. Oh, Hedgie just wanted to be alone. He was tired of everyone laughing at him with this, this thing on his head. He, he wouldn't even fit in, inside of his den. Poor Hedgie. 
He just can't get it off. Do you remember why he can't get it off? Yeah, it's stuck on his prickles. Hedgehogs are a little bit like porcupines, mm -hmm. but they're softer. You can hold a hedgehog. Could you hold a porcupine? Probably not a great idea. Probably not a good idea. Well, he didn't see Lisa running after him the other, with the other stocking in her hand. Come back here, you silly hedgehog, she called. Oh, no, Hedgie thought. Even this girl is laughing at me. And there is a goose. Lisa caught up and pulled her stocking off of Hedgie's head. You ridiculous little hedgehog, she laughed. Don't you know that animals don't wear clothes? Hedgie headed for his den and Lisa started back toward the clothesline. That's when she saw all of her missing woolens. <laughs> Uh-oh, where did they go? <laughs> the animals had taken them and each one was thinking, now I am wearing a magnificent hat. <laughs> I love the chicken with the glove. <laughs> Lisa was still chasing them when Hedgie reached his den. How ridiculous they look. Don't they know animals should never wear clothing? And there you go, the hat. Hey, Teacher Missy. Yes, my dear. Would you like to join me and our Storytime friends and do a fun felt board? Well, I would love to. So if you see on our felt board story time, friends, we have a sun, we have a cloud, we have a tree, and we have a flower, and we have a problem. This is our problem. We have lost our hats. Just like Lisa lost her stocking, we have lost our hats and we need to find our hats. So we're going to sing a song about it and it's called, Where Has My Hat Gone? And I want you to help us find our hats. Are you ready? Are you ready, Teacher Missy? Oh, I yes. am. Teacher Missy's probably looking for her words. I'm always looking for my words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is our song. Oh, where, oh, where has my red hat gone? Oh, where, oh, where could it be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did somebody hide it from me? Can you see, Storytime friends, where my red hat could be? You see anything? Oh, yeah, you're right. The flower is red, but I count one, two, three, four. <gasps> oh. Is there an extra petal there? Let's see. Could That's... our hat be? Oh. Our hat's hiding! Look at that! We found our red hat. Nice job, but guess what? That's not the only hat that's missing. Oh, where, oh, where has my white hat gone? Oh, where, oh, where could it be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did somebody hide it from me? Do you see where the white hat is? White hat. Oh, I think you're right. Look up in the white cloud. Look at that. There is our white hat. Oh my goodness. Hiding right up in our white cloud. So we found a red hat and we found a white hat. But I'm still missing some hats. Hmm. Let's see if we can find some more. Here we go. Oh, where, oh, where is my brown hat gone? Oh, where, oh, where can it be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. 
Did somebody hide it from me? Brown. Have you found it, Storytime friends? Brown, brown, you found a brown hat? I don't, I don't think it's behind the flower. Under the cloud. Well, maybe under the No. No, not just there. blue sky there. Huh. Oh, <gasps> did you see the brown trunk? I wonder if... <gasps> Storytime friends, did you see that? It's like camouflage yeah, in the was. brown trunk. Look at that. There is our brown hat. That was almost like magic, the way that happened. That was very, yeah. We found a red hat, a white hat, and a brown hat. Just like Hedgie found a stocking hat. Yes. I wonder if there's one more hat hidden. Should we try to find it? Oh, where, oh, where has my yellow hat gone? Oh, where, oh, where can it be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did somebody hide it from me? Do, do, do. Have you found it? Hmm. Oh, you guys are so clever. You're right, it's not behind the tree or the cloud or the flower. It's hidden in the sun. Did you see it? Look at that. The band of our hat is a part of the sun. Oh my goodness. And there we go. Look at that story time, friends. We found a yellow hat, a brown hat, a white hat, and a red hat. You guys were marvelous at that game. And thanks for playing with us. I have another book for us, Miss Tracy. Oh my goodness, those animals look a lot like the animals in the last book. Oh, I know, don't they look very much like the other animals? And do you know why that is? Why is that? Because the same person illustrated this book, mm. did all the magnificent pictures in this book. This book is called The Mitten, and it was adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. And that's a little different than being the author, isn't it? It is. It's a little bit different. She has taken a story that was already around. Probably a really old story. Yeah. And and kind of redone the story. She's re she's redone it. Yeah. Um, and she um, that sounded wrong. And but she did do all the illustrations for this. So we're gonna and it it's you you listen and see what you think, because it's a little similar to something we just read. The Mitten, adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. And it comes to us from J.P. Putnam's Sons. And this was originally a Ukrainian folktale that she read, and then she has retold the story in her version. Once there was a boy named Nikki who wanted his new mittens made from wool, just as white as snow. And here's a picture of a woman with balls of yarn. I wonder who that is. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens. And finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first, I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and got left behind. And here it is, right there on the ground. And that's so hard to see a white mitten on the white snow. I know. And if you look at the picture, do you think he even knows that he dropped it? I don't think so. He doesn't look like he's thinking about his mitten at all. Oh, but there's somebody. Hmm, there's an interesting little animal. <gasps> a mole! Uh, tired from tunneling along, discovered that mitten and he burrowed inside of it. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay 
And there he is going right inside that little mitt. It made a perfect little place for him to get warm. Oh, oh there's a rabbit. Let's see what's going on here. <gasps> a snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. Well, he stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in feet first. Well, the mole didn't think there was enough room for both of them, but he saw the rabbit's big kickers, and he moved over. So now we have a mole and a rabbit in the mitten. <gasps> Uh-oh, somebody else is on the way. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to go to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, not being ones to argue with someone covered in prickles. They made room. There he goes. Oh, somebody else is coming. I believe that's an owl. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by all the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw his glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Look at the mitten. What is happening to that mitten? There's somebody peeking out of this tree. <laughs> Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed that mitten and he began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, <laughs> they gave him a thumb up. So. Do you know what they're talking about when they talk about his diggers? Yeah, his feet. Yeah, they have very good digging skills. Oh, somebody's coming. Hmm. This is bigger than a badger. Well, it started snowing, but the animals were snug in that mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of that cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. That means sleepy. The fox poked his muzzle in when the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth. Well, they gave that fox lots of room. Oh my goodness, Miss Tracy. That is a huge bear. Now, what in the world is going to happen next? Well, a great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Well, not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed tightly as could be. But what animal argues with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged too many times its size. Ah, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Oh, well, that's a very tiny little thing. Hmm, that's a little mouse, it looks like. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wiggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. There she is. <laughs> and he is just looking at her. And then I see Nikki. Well, the bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Achoo! Well, the force of that sneeze shot that mitten up into the sky, and it scattered the animals in all directions. Look at them. They're flying every old which way. 
On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. What is he seeing? It looks like his mitten is in, in the air. In the air. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. And look at the animals are all just kind of stuck in the snow every old witch old way. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then that he still had his new mittens. So he takes them in and shows her that he has not lost them. And what is she looking at? Do they look the same? They do not look the same. They don't. I wonder what she's thinking. I bet she's wondering how that one mitten got so big. Well, huh? we know how it happened. We know how it happened. Yes, we do. Hey, story time, friends. Should we ask Teacher Missy to do a scarf song with us? Okay, let's use our best asking oh. words. Hey, Teacher Missy. Yes, Miss Tracy. Would you kindly join us in a scarf song? It would be my pleasure. All right, so I'm gonna grab my scarf and I have a green scarf oh, for you. Oh, the green one, I love the green I one. I know, it's, it's like her favorite. It it's is my favorite. favorite. Excuse me? Absolutely. Story time, friends. Tiger would like to be our story time friend today. Hi, Teacher Missy. Good morning, Tiger. I am simply delighted to see you. And I to see you as well. Hello, story time friends. <laughs> Tiger is a little over the top sometimes. Right. Lots of energy this morning, Tiger. Yeah. Good for you. Tiger has a lot of energy. All right, so out of your story time kit, friends, can you find your scarf? Remember when we made our scarf into a scarf? That was a fun time. All right, and if you don't have your story time kit yet, it's waiting here for you at the library, and it'll have a scarf inside of it for you, and a bean bag, and a shaker egg, and your very own story time friend. Just come to the circulation desk and ask for your story time kit. All right, and if you don't have a scarf to wave, wave whatever you got. Wave a pillowcase, wave a paper towel, wave your sock. It's just fun to wave things and it looks so pretty to wave things. All right, let's do our scarf warm up song. Are you ready for this one? My scarf goes up, my scarf goes down, my scarf goes around, 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 around. My scarf goes in, my scarf comes out, my scarf flies about, 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 about. Should we do it fast? Well, let's do it fast. Okay. My, my scarf, scarf goes up. My scarf goes down. My scarf goes around, 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 around. My scarf goes in. My scarf comes out. My scarf flies about, 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 about. All right. That took a lot of scarf energy out of me. It did. Okay. Tiger, I might need a little of your energy. Here we go. We are going to do a scarf song about a hedgehog. And if you remember, we saw hedgehogs in both the hat and the mitten. We did. And the hedgehogs, as Teacher Missy pointed out, are kind of prickly. Okay, so we don't want it, but, but they're soft prickly. So you could cuddle a hedgehog if you wanted to. Might not be my favorite thing to cuddle though. Okay, so we are going to pretend that our scarf is a lion. No. Say, Miss Tracy, for crying out loud, we're not talking about lions today, we're talking about hedgehogs. So we're gonna pretend our scarf is a hedgehog. Ooh, 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 okay, that was fun. Okay, here we go. This is called Hedgehog, Hedgehog. And our scarf is gonna be our hedgehog. Hedgehog, hedgehog, turn around. Hedgehog, hedgehog, touch the ground. Hedgehog, hedgehog, stretch up high. Hedgehog, hedgehog, touch the sky. 
Hedgehog, hedgehog, search down low. Hedgehog, hedgehog, touch your toes. Hedgehog, hedgehog, wave to the ground. Hedgehog, head curl up, small and round. Can you curl up your hedgehog? So small and round. And there he is. Ooh. Should we do that again? Okay, here we go. Hedgehog, hedgehog, turn around. Hedgehog, hedgehog, touch the ground. Hedgehog, hedgehog, stretch up high. Hedgehog, hedgehog, touch the sky. Hedgehog, hedgehog, search down low. Hedgehog, hedgehog, touch your toes. Hedgehog, hedgehog, wave to the ground. Hedgehog, curl up, small and round. Oh my goodness, that was so fun. Thanks for playing hedgehog with us. Oh my heavens to Betsy, what a fun day it's been. This has been a great day. I Those are just two books that I really just think are so delightful. And we have a lot of Jan Brett books at the library, so if you want to come on in, we'll show you where they are. She has written so many books, she has her own special spot. Yeah, I'm just sure for she Jan does. Brett books. And we made a pet hedgehog. I really like my pet hedgehog, so he's going to sing with us. All right? Are you ready to say goodbye? I'm never ready, but we have to. Oh, and Storytime Friends, before we say goodbye, thanks again for helping us find all our hats. That was not easy to no. find all of our hats. That so, brown one was really tricky. It was so tricky. I know. Hiding in the tree trunk. All right, so Hedgehog, Tiger, Teacher Missy, and I would like to sing with you. I'm going to put Hedgehog down so I can clap. All right, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Sorry, time is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Wear your hat and mittens. <laughs>